name's Robert Apodaca. Uh, a little about my father. He was in the third graduating class of the United States Air Force Academy. I was born in Laredo Air Force Base when my dad was down there. Uh, my older brother was born at Craig Air Force Base in Selma when my dad was deployed to Vietnam. We moved back home to my mom's hometown, which was in Alabama. June 8, 1967, um, we received word that my dad was shot down. Didn't find out much. Uh, at the beginning with the government, there wasn't much to tell. They didn't want to um, stir things up. In the 80s, it became more of an issue. The POW-MIA issue became very much more public, and the government started more and more efforts to find out what was going on and what had happened, and would even come to us if they get an intelligence report. We think your father may be alive, and then Days or weeks would go by and we wouldn't hear anything. And then they finally come back and said, I'm sorry, but that didn't pan out. That was just a missionary in the area. You really do try to search, struggle, um, that frustration, um, that not knowing can just tear you apart. And so finally, um, it was in the summer of 2001, the government approached us and they were able to make a DNA match of a set of remains, a few pieces of bones from a crash site. That was in 2001 and he was class of 61 and so his classmates said, we're having our 40th reunion in September. We would love it if you could bring your dad home and we would like to bury him at the Air Force Academy and have a memorial service for him. I traveled out in September. Um, to Honolulu. That's where the Central Identification Laboratory was. They had prepared a full service dress, all his medals and his rank, and all it was all laid out on the table, and his remains were inside the, in the, uh, the uniform. Uh, then we put that in a casket, and we get over into, back to the United States mainland, and it's Tuesday morning, September 11, 2001 and I'm trying to get to Colorado Springs, and we land in Minneapolis. I'd been up, you know, since Monday morning, and, um, and I'm just staring out the window, and way off in the distance, I can see all these green tails all lined up of C-130s. So I call back to Colorado, where my dad's classmates were, and they says, we'll make some phone calls. Just hold on. And uh, about three o'clock in the morning, I got a phone call. It said, be on the flight line at seven o'clock. We're bringing your dad home. And the C-130 comes pulling up, you know, and then they drop the tailgate down. We load my dad up on there, and then the loadmaster says, sir, if you could climb up the ladder, go up into the cockpit, they've got a seat for you up there. The aircraft commander, the colonel, uh, pulled his headset off, and turned back and looked at me and says, I don't know if you realize this, but you're the only passenger in the United States airspace at this time. You could hear the radio traffic through the headset, and uh, um, I heard our call sign, Blue Bark, Blue Bark 1. I found out later Blue Bark was the call sign used during the Vietnam War for our, when we were bringing home our fallen comrades. Most of the pilots that were flying were old reservists, people who had served, and they knew what Blue Bark was. So we reached altitude, and uh, the aircraft commander uh, looked back at me and said, uh, you need to climb down the ladder and go down and look out over the wing. And so I walk over to the little window and look out over the wing and right off the wing, it looks like 10 feet off the wingtip is a fighter jet. And he's just sitting there flying, escorting the C-130. He looked at me and he saluted, then he wags his wings and he peels off. And another jet just pops in to take his place. These jets were the close air patrols that were over the United States that were coming from their station to escort the C-130 for a little bit. The C-130 flew a, uh, did a flyby over the Peterson Air Force Base uh, before they landed. Um, and when we landed, we were met with a color guard there and uh, they got a missing man formation with F-4 flyover um, at the Air Force Academy when we held his memorial service. I love telling this story to people especially the military. In the Air Force, the Airman's Creed ends with, I will leave no man behind. But for me, those aren't words. 
those who were a promise that the military kept. 